Hello again and welcome back to our course on Access 2013 Advanced. In the previous section we looked at one type of action query and that was the update query. In this section we're going to continue looking at action queries starting with delete queries. We're going to use the student database and the first thing we're going to look at is the courses that are available to the students in our college. You can see here a list of the courses that we run and what the governors have decided is that we are no longer going to run short courses and a short course is defined as anything that is less than 30 weeks in duration. Now I'm going to assume for the purposes of this exercise that we're looking at courses that haven't started yet so when we delete a course we don't have to worry about deleting something that's already in progress or indeed dealing with the fact that some students may already be enrolled on that course. Think of this as deleting the list of courses, the schedule of courses, our syllabus for the next semester or term. So I need to delete all courses from the courses table where the number of weeks is less than 30. That's a straightforward thing to do. Before you do deletions on a mass scale like this, you certainly should take a backup of your database and as we'll see in a moment you should always start with a select query and make sure that your select is returning the correct courses. Some people also when they're doing this first of all run what's called a make table query. Now I'm going to explain make table queries a little bit later on in this section but the basic principle of a make table query in the context of doing a deletion is that rather than delete these records and once they're gone they're gone you can actually first of all copy them all to a sort of backup table and if everything went wrong you could actually move them back into the courses table again. Now once we've looked at make table queries you'll see that that's a pretty straightforward thing to do but let's just do a straightforward delete now. So the first thing to do is to create a select query. So there it is in the grid. Select all the details of the courses where the number of weeks is less than 30. Let's run that and there we have those three courses where the number of weeks is less than 30 then go back into design view, change it to a delete query, let's just have a look at the SQL, delete the courses from the table courses where the number of weeks is less than 30. Click on run, you are about to delete three rows from the specified table great caution there once you click yes you can't use the undo command to reverse the changes are you sure you want to delete these selected records we are sure click on yes and those three records are deleted if I go back into the courses table you can see that they're all marked as deleted records and just one thing to mention here this does vary depending on your local setup but if you're in a situation like this where having deleted some records from a table you're looking at the table and you can see that the records are deleted you see all those deleted markers at any time you can refresh that just by pressing the F5 key that does a refresh and you can just confirm that the records you thought you were deleting have actually been deleted the next thing we're going to do is to create a make table query and as the name implies this involves making a table from existing data in one or more existing tables. Now there are a couple of things to be very careful and wary of when creating and running make table queries. The first of them is that when you run a make table query you need to specify the name of the table that you are making and if you name an existing table the data in that table will be overwritten. So you have to be very careful when you're running a make table query that you specify a table name for a table that doesn't exist. Now of course your intention may be to overwrite the data in an existing table and if so that's fine but you need to be extremely careful that you don't overwrite data in an existing table by accident. The second thing to be aware of is that when you've run a make table query, possibly creating data from a couple of existing tables say, there is no linkage between the table you've made and 
the tables that you've got the data from. No ongoing linkage. You make the table and that's it. There's no connection or relationship between them from that point onwards. So if you update the data in the source tables beyond that point, you will not make any changes to the table that you've made. Now what I've been asked to do on this occasion is a little job for our administration department. They're going to write to each of the students that have a USA home address and they'd like a straightforward table with just four fields in it basically. The first and last name of the student in one field, the first line of the address in a second field, the third line of the address in standard format in the third field and then finally just USA to make it clear that it's a USA based address. So what I'm going to do is to make a table, I'm going to call the table the student mailing address table and the first thing I'm going to do is to put together a select query that gives me the correct contents for each of those four fields. Now you can set about this using SQL view or design view for the query. On this occasion I'm going to use straightforward design view I think, query design. I'm only going to need the student table and I'm going to get four fields out of this. The first one is going to be first name space last name. Now you'll remember from earlier on in the course that we used an if function to do that using logic which meant that if the student did have a first name we still came out with a sensible full name. I'm going to leave you to put that in. On this occasion I'm going to assume it's straightforward. So all I'm going to do is concatenate first name ampersand and then double sp quote space ampersand last name. Now as I say you'd probably want to put the if statement in there to cover the case where the first name is blank. If I leave that as it is, let me just click somewhere else. What Access 2013 automatically does is to give that field, that constructed field, a default name of Expra1. And don't forget of course you could do all of this using the expression builder but I'm going to type these things straight in. If I want to give this a name of my own I just need to change the name that it's given there. I'm going to call this the full name. Now as I construct each of these fields I'm just going to run that and make sure that it's doing the right things. That looks fine. Let's go back into design view. Now the second line of the address is literally just going to be the student's address, that line there. Let's run that. That looks fine as well. Back into design view. Now I don't want to just call that address because I want to differentiate between the three lines of the address so I'm going to call that one address 1 colon after it identifies it as the name of that field. Now let's move on to the second line of the address. The second line of the address is built out of three parts. It's built out of the city, the state province and the zip postal code. Now again you could go into the expression builder and use the IntelliSense and prompts in there to make sure that you put the right fields in. I'm literally just going to type them in. So I'm going to put first of all city I'm going to concatenate that with a space, concatenate that with, we'll have another space, and I'm going to call that field address 2. Now if at any stage you make an error here, and you get an error, you can normally correct it pretty much just by looking at what you've typed or maybe even checking in the SQL code and seeing where you've made some kind of syntactical error or whatever. But let's try running that now and that looks pretty good as well because we have a correct address line too. City, state, zip or postal code and of course the extended zip code there in one case you can see down there for Sergio Nadal. So let's go back into design view the fourth line, which is address line 3, is just going to identify these as 
students whose home address is in the USA. So I'm literally going to put as address line 3, literally USA. Let's run that. And there we are. I've got well-formed addresses. Now, the next thing to do is to turn this into a make table query. I'm going to save the query though. Bear in mind, of course, that I may want to run this again at some future point, and I might need to do it, for instance, to refresh this particular table. So click on OK. The query is now saved. Now let's go back into Design View again, and we're now going to make it into a Make Table query. Click on Make Table. We can choose to make a table in the current database or another database. We're going to make it in the current database and we're going to call it Student Mailing Addresses. Click on OK. And now all we have to do is to actually run the query. So let's click on Run. You are about to paste 35 rows into a new table. That's it. Let's go into the navigation pane and let's open up that new table and there we are, there's our new table and of course if we want to we can even look at the design of this new table and using the approach that we've used here Access 2013 has created the table it's created four short text fields given each of them what are pretty much default settings you can using various other approaches you can control the table that's made in much more detail including using SQL statements to control the table and individual fields within the table that's outside the scope of what we're doing here but I'm sure you get the general idea from this and if you want to learn more about make table and how you can then use SQL to alter tables and so on there's plenty of literature about to help you to do that so that's the make table query. There's one remaining action query that we're going to look at in this course. We're going to look at it briefly in the next section and that is the append query. So please join me for that.